Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Buddhang Dhammang Sanghang Namasami So good morning everyone. Well, welcome to this gathering. And it's a uh, opportunity for the sort of those interested in the Clear Mountain Project, <laughs> trying to clear, create a clear mountain. <laughs> um, the uh, um, sort of Ajahn Nisabo, Ajahn Kovilo have been, so this is the third year, and uh, yeah, there's a Definitely a momentum gathering, which is very nice to see. And uh, that, say that momentum uh, and, and is, you know, it's important that you pay attention to the foundations. I mean, sort of speaking to the, the whole community um, that, that, uh, I think one of the things uh, that uh, I remember when Ajahn Amaro, um, when he and I were were setting up uh, or agreeing to sort of go into this venture of starting a Bayagiri Buddhist monastery, one of the visions he he had uh, was that it, it was the opportunity to create a uh, a, a traditional, uh, bringing a traditional form uh, to America. And, uh, you know, I think that's one of the things that we can do as monastics uh, is uh, represent a, a, uh, uh, an ancient uh, tradition. And, and the principles that the Buddha laid down of, of, of teaching and training, how to train the heart and how to, how to create an understanding of this human condition um, in a way that allows us to experience a sense of peace and well-being. And to do that, because uh, I, I think there's, there's, a, uh, there's a, I, a, again, sort of harkening back to the, the, the uh, uh, Ajahn Amaro thing that setting up something that that did bring these these uh, aspects of of uh, of tradition here in a in a way that is relevant to the to a modern time he said you know there's lots of especially in the this was in the bay area so I was thinking in the san francisco bay area the, there's lots of meditation centers, there's lots of uh, retreat centers, um, but there isn't really a, a, a monastic form. Uh, so being able to, to, to do that, and, and it does require um, a, a certain um, conditions that are, are supportive, so that finding a and for for our, uh, Ajahn Amaro and for us, I mean, he he actually sort of said, "Well, I think we've got to be at least two between two and three hours out of San Francisco for us to survive." <laughs> and uh, I think that 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 has sort of held true. Um, and uh, so that having a place that is a is a refuge, but it's not. So far away, and I know that that uh, there's a you know trying to uh, find 
a suitable property that is within reasonable striking distance of, of Seattle uh, without getting too far away, not getting too close. And, uh, yeah, and too close means it's just ridiculously expensive, uh, as well as being, um, you, you want to have a, uh, an environment that that you can go into and actually let the city drop away behind you. And so there's, you, there's lots of, uh, and, I, and I think they've been, um, you know, looking at all sorts of places and properties. And I think was yesterday morning, Al Allison sent a, sent a listing, a, a new listing <laughs> to, to, to consider. So, you know, there's, there's, there's lots of consideration and reflection going into it and and to uh, so that that that's but it I think one of the things that's see, more important is paying attention to laying your foundations of of the Dhamma principles in your group uh, and and that uh, and of course that starts with the monastics uh, setting 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 a decent example <laughs> and uh, and uh, and that because we've got you've got to you got to walk your talk and and it's actually and there is a uh, uh, the old English adage uh, talk is cheap <laughs> so it's it's important that that uh, the both for the Say monastics, and then the lay people who are drawing close, because there's uh, inevitably there's people who really, you know, are, are are quite central. They say the board is 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 very is very central, and uh, and then uh, sort of concentric circles of involvement. Uh, so that being able to to uh, um, have that commitment to practice and training, and and commitment to Commitment to the Dhamma, um, it's, it's really important. And of course the foundations are refuges and precepts. And it's, it's, it seems like a, 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 an innocent enough ceremony to, to start a day with. But once you start reflecting on it, you start to realize, oh, that's actually quite central to the whole endeavor of whether one is a lay person or a monastic uh, how do we live with a refuge and a foundation in virtue and integrity um, how do, and and, uh, and it's helpful to have have these fundamental guiding principles uh, to to be a touchstone and uh, and take them on uh, and taking it on as a training. Uh, I mean, this is a, uh, on a certain level, there, there, you know, as, uh, say, Americans, um, th there's, there is a, there's a fundamentalist streak in America that is, is, you know, can easily be translated into Buddhism as well, because it's uh, you know it's thing trying to find things that are absolutely right and absolutely wrong, um, absolutely good, absolutely bad, and then rest content with that. But this is a it's an ongoing reflection and retrain and training and on, ongoing uh, exploration of, of what is it that 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 because uh, the Buddha's the Buddha's uh, foundation or central goal uh, it is not sort of absolute purity. Uh, it is freedom from suffering, uh, and or or absolute absolute happiness and bliss. Uh, I mean, the, <laughs> the, the no, no, because how do we free the heart from its tendency to be agitated or disturbed or discontent and 
No, we can get discontent with when things are going all good and, and going going right for us. Uh, how, do, uh, how do we recognize that? So that, that, that sense of paying attention to the, the, the training of the heart and, and, uh, um, and coming over in the car this morning um, uh, with our, our driver and talking about you know, just the challenges of living in the world and keeping precepts and, and uh, doing that in the midst of a, of a family life where not everybody's on the same page and, and, uh, and tra- navigating all of the, the, the world of r- relationship and then precepts and family life. So that, that uh, uh, sort of, uh, and I'm trying to emphasize, and I think it's something that I bring up over and over again with the, with the monastics as well, that you know, certainly for Ajahn Chah, the, the 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 purpose of 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 sila of precepts uh, is 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 much more for an understand. It's a reflective tool for understanding volition. It's like how do we understand our own minds? Not so much getting at things absolutely right all the time and resting comfortable in that I'm finally right. Uh, it's, it's what's the volition behind that? What's the mental state behind? What is the impulse behind things? Because that's where we create our happiness. That's where we create our suffering. And so that, that it's, it's... And learning how to relate to the, this the Buddha's training uh, in a way that that, that makes it, it uh, a certain clarity and confidence so that there's a uh, there's an there's one of the say the goals of uh, and one of the images that I always find inspiring is uh, one of the goals of practice is a sense of unshakability uh, there's a sense of Stability, firmness, unshakable quality of the heart uh, that uh, is not uh, it's not perturbed when when there are discrepancies or challenges. It's sort of you, you uh, one can one can one has the confidence and trust in the in these principles of of the of the of the dhamma of the refuges and the precepts that one is. Uh, it, it has a certain solidity and clarity. So, uh, so doing that as an individual, doing it as a group, um, and I think the building the, the building community is just so. Um, I mean, it's so important any time. I mean, it's certainly something that that the Buddha <clears throat> um, placed tremendous emphasis on. Uh, when he began his teaching dispensation and uh, has carried through and I think it's also that which carries the uh, say the Buddha Dhamma on to the on to the next generation on to the next people and say in, in this case on to the on to the next continent uh, uh, that say uh, it's the principles of community, um, and so that 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 building community with 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 the clarity of of, of of one of purpose, but then also how do we how do we live it again? How do we how do we how do we walk our talk? Um, and just, you know, there's and. Uh, one of the things that comes to mind is is that, uh, of course, in in Buddhism, um, the principles are are going to be grounded in in a quality of that which is wholesome, skillful, beneficial, and it, and it's a term that say in the in the Pali they say the kusala, um, and. As opposed to being sort of, say, absolutely right, or uh, 
absolutely good. Certain, what is wholesome? What is skillful? What is beneficial? Uh, both for oneself as well as for others. Uh, and and there's a uh, there's a set of teachings which most certainly uh, in, in Thai tradition and I think probably throughout the various uh, Theravada Buddhist traditions uh, that comes up over and over again as the the foundations of the wholesome. Uh, and as a shorthand, you know, you know, dana sila bhavana, the, the, the generosity, giving, sharing, dana. Uh, sila as the uh, precepts, but then virtue and integrity. And bhavana, the meditation, cultivation uh, is probably a better word than meditation because bhavana is much more how do we cultivate and develop mindfulness and clarity uh, in all of our postures, all of our activities. And so that, that, that sense of laying, having this foundation of, 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 the, uh, of the wholesome, of the skillful, as a basis for cultivating our, our community. And, and the, uh, uh, since uh, today is a day of, uh, is, is a, 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 say a robe offering, um, but in, it's a way of, of it's creating an occasion where we all come together and there's a, a sharing and giving, uh, giving of food, uh, giving of um, resources and requ uh, requisites for the development of the future. So it's like a fundraising. So there's, there's giving. But it's also important to reckon when we start talking about giving, uh, that that there is a <clears throat> a sense of of uh, I mean there's material giving, um, but then also acts of service and just being able to help in different ways, and especially as a uh, say as we're building community, you know what are the different ways we can help so, and and uh, and again um, I think. Uh, like Ajahn Nisabo and Ajahn Kovilo are, are uh, um, inc encouraging people in really skillful ways uh, in terms of creating involvement. Um, and, and, and one of the things I just heard about being here is just there's, there is a, there's like a, a, a gratitude coordinator. Or grat anyway, just g calling up people and so thanking them for the expressing gratitude. I mean, it's uh, 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 it's incredibly skillful. Um, and uh, 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 so it's sort of, uh, I was thinking, yeah, what do we do at a bike? <laughs> oh, I hope it doesn't go into a void completely. <laughs> so it's it's uh, you know that's a, that's a really skillful way of, of 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 people acknowledging people's generosity and uh, and uh, you know makes it very meaningful to 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 one uh, the people who have shared and give and uh, shown their generosity and then also for volunteers to help to kind of solidify, acknowledge that and solidify that. So it creates a community involvement. And uh, so the, the uh, finding ways to do that uh, and so in different acts of service, um, like an event like this doesn't happen without a lot of volunteers helping to make it happen. And the cleanup after certainly doesn't <laughs> happen without people helping out. So, so there's, uh, there's that sense of, of th that is dana as well. I mean, it's it's not just it's not a, not about the material material giving, um, and it's also uh, a, a, you know, an aspect of an aspect of dana uh, is the is also in again part of. Abhayagiri, uh, the word abhaya mean, literally means fearless, uh, but it's also, it has a connotation of forgiveness as well. So that, that the, 
an aspect of dana is abhaya dana, the giving, being willing to forgive, um, being willing to uh, give a sense of a sense of safety and security, uh, because it's uh, it's hard to feel ease and comfort around somebody who's holding a grudge. <laughs> <laughs> and it's hard for yourself to feel comfortable uh, if uh, if it's a, like that nursing one's wrath is is, is a uh, is a is a primary feature. It might be very logical and and uh, and justifiable uh, in a, in a rational way, but it doesn't brighten the heart and, and doesn't 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 end suffering. That's for sure. So that that sense of generosity in in in, in these in different ways, as I was saying, of yeah, there is the material, and it's really important. And there and we wouldn't get to eat today if if people weren't willing to bring food, and we wouldn't uh, been able to eat yesterday or tomorrow <laughs> for monastics and and. Uh, uh, I mean, yesterday we went, uh, they, they took me to Pike Place, I've never been to Pike Place Market before, and I experienced it in a very different way than most people experience Pike Place. I mean, uh, uh, I went there as an alms mendicant and was sort of, I don't know how many times I had to empty the bowl because it was, you know, so many people wanted to make offerings. Um, it was really, you know, very inspiring, um, and uh, and then that was shared out to to all sorts of different people. So it's it's uh, the the uh, something is uh, the, the generosity keeps giving gifts, uh, and 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 the uh, um, the involvement and in, uh, creating a field of, of goodness uh, to to be able to to abide in. Uh, it's something that we all can can participate in. Uh, uh, and as say as monastics we have we have the wonderful opportunity to be to help to be a catalyst for that, encouraging people to yeah to live with a a foundation of of generosity, living with the foundation of, of sila, um, there it's not just about keeping rules. Uh, again, it's around this sense of of understanding the impulses of the heart, uh, but then learning how to live with a uh, with yeah, a virtue and integrity that that is like a, 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 an underlying principle of how we relate to each other as human beings. And, 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 and uh, Ajahn Nisipo alluded to that in one of the discourses of the Buddha, the Buddha saying this is Mahadana, sort of the great gift. And, you know, oftentimes when you think of great gift, you know, oh, how much money is great, you know. <laughs> but, but as the Buddha sort of immediately takes it beyond the Again, the material giving and the, the keeping of precepts, uh, refraining from from the, 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 these aspects of, of of harming and 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 say untruth, infidelity, um, of refraining from heedlessness. Those are uh, that's a great gift uh, because it gives. The qualities of safety and and security, and gives the feeling of 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 of, of, a, of a sense of closeness. Um, so as this is as we do that through our living of precepts, and and uh, so learning how to hold the precepts in a way that is a great gift to 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 others. I mean, it's a great gift to ourselves, certainly. Um, and but then it uh, it creates these bonds of harmony that that are important to be be nurturing and, and nourishing, uh, so that we we and that's also how we create a, a like a a web of of kalyanamitta of 
good spiritual friendships. Um, and so that, you know, sometimes living in the monastery for us monastics, you know, we, we do have a kind of a ready-made set of, of Kalyanamitta. And Kalyanamitta doesn't mean you actually have to like each other all the time. <laughs> it's, but you feel you can trust them and feel secure around them. And that's, again, it's an incredible gift. Um, so that building our relationships on this sense of trust and virtue and integrity. Um, so that building our community on that, that foundation, generosity of integrity, and a, a commitment to training the heart, bhavana. Uh, there's you know, the fundamental training is just, just uh, yeah, acknowledging when it's okay to make mistakes, uh, you know. It's okay to, to mess up if you learn from it. It's when you just keep making the same old mistakes all the time. It's you, 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 you really undermine yourself, and people start to start avoiding you. <laughs> so, but. But that willingness to learn is is just so much a part of of a bhavana, taking an interest, taking an interest in the process of learning. Uh, you know, and what can I learn from this situation? What can I learn from, say, a big gathering like today? What can I learn from my fellow human beings? What can I learn from stepping back and being in solitude? And, and you know, the whole spectrum are opportunities for learning, and that is. Uh, Bhavana literally means bringing into being. So bringing into being a sense of interest and curiosity about what you know what's what's true, what's not true, what's 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 beneficial, what's not beneficial, what leads to suffering, what leads out of suffering. And I think that's the uh, the biggest sort of question to be asking because that's what the Buddha is. Or, you know, really pay attention. Dukkha and the ending of Dukkha. And he says it over and over again through the Sutta. I teach only two things. Dukkha and the ending of Dukkha. So they're taking an interest in that. Because we can have things figured out on an uh, on a, a idealistic, rational level and still be miserable. Uh, that, 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 so that, that really, pain, what, what is the What's the source of, of dukkha? Where, how do we be free from this dukkha? So this bhavana, I and mean, of course, cultivation of mindfulness, cultivation of a calm abiding uh, of the heart, and a, a, a cultivation of reflection and investigation. These are all factors of, of, of development. Um, and, and it's something that you can pursue together. I mean, I think there's... Uh, again, just sort of uh, the uh, say as a community, uh, you're developing um, means by which you, whereby you can be exploring some of your your Zoom groups and your in-person meetings, or exploring the different ways you can develop this practice and training. And and I just encourage you all to, to yeah to not get locked into to uh, just, uh, uh, I got I to I gotta be, a, I got to meditate all the time to be a good Buddhist. Uh, and, and just, to, just learn how to make your meditation something enjoyable and that you actually learn from and develop clarity and, and, and well-being from. Uh, and there's many different ways and, uh, and, and, and make the the dana and sila a part of that whole process, uh, the community a whole part of that process, and you'll find that, that you yourself will probably become a better human being and a happier one, and you'll have a community to keep doing that with. So I'll offer that for reflection today. <laughs>